Now that we know all the strides of the premium collection, let's take a look at all the winners, losers, and all the in-betweeners. Hey Carfathers, welcome to another discussion video and once again we're taking a look at the premium collection. Last time we looked at all the progenitor dragons and this time we're gonna take a look at all the strides. And instead of me going to rank them all from best to worst, as that is a impossible task, we're gonna just categorize them in winners, losers and in some extra brackets in between. As it's very hard to distinguish which precise card is actually better than another card as Within premium, there are so many other uh, different cards. The card pool is so big, it's hard to determine the exact power level of a certain card. As well in the meta, as you need to look at all the other clans as well. So for this, I made four different categories. The absolute winners. These are the cards that are going to be dividing the meta right out of the gate when a set is revealed. And everybody is going to probably agree on these cards that these are nuts. These things are probably... On the edge of being broken next up we've got the winners uh, category these are basically cards that are very strong they're gonna make an impact in the meta might not be as much as the absolute winners but they're definitely gonna make some tops and they're gonna be played and built then we've got the in-betweeners these are basically the cards that they aren't bad but they aren't as good as the rest of the strides as they are more on a utilize effect or they can work a certain archetype or they can potentially make a new type of deck available in their respective clans or they are a good different alternative option in their current respective gso and lastly we have the losers categories and these are basically the cards that aren't gonna do anything they are way too weak or they just fill in such a niche that it doesn't really make them worth enough to put them into your G-Zone. And they're probably not going to be run in almost every deck of that respective clans. So with that said, let's jump right into this list and let's start off with the absolute winners. These are probably the ones you already guessed. There is, uh, these are on everybody's top list of these new strides. And these are the one for Shadow Petalin, Nova Grappler and Mega Colony. These three cards are going to be nuts when this set hits the meta as each and, e each and every card of these three are so good in their respective clans that they are going to change the current meta environment. For the Shadow Petalin, it basically enables you to go early rush and then with a full field you get benefit out of them as you can sec units, draw extra cards from them. And with the Ritual 10 ability, you get plus 15k, plus a crit, and a battle door effect on all your units, including your Vanguard. And Shadow Petalin can multi-attack with the rearguards that can potentially make them have five attacks with these extra effects on, to on top of them will probably result that we're gonna see a lot of first try turn kills with the new Luart. It's gonna be the new Turbo Luart. And it is looking scary. And the same can be said for the new Bustard for Nova Grappler. They basically made a stronger winning champ. And with those extra Vanguard attacks, with all those insane amount of drives, we're probably going to see a lot of people dying at their first try turn against an Nova Grappler player as they weren't scary enough with just multi-attacking of winning chat. No, we're going to get a multi-attacking Vanguard as well on top of everything that has, what, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 drive checks depending on how much you can fill your soul. It's going to be scary. And then we have the one for Mega Colony that can shut down any kind of strategy. And don't forget, this will also work against G-Guardians as it limits any kind of superior calling. So you cannot G-Guard for the first coming turns that they go into this thing. And they can just go into this thing four turns in a row. So good luck with your G-Guardians. And also her second ability can call a new version of Endline. And with a new version of Phantom Black, they can make a column that you probably cannot guard against. And you also don't have G-Guardians to your disposal. So yeah. Good luck! Now onto the winners category, these cards are going to be very strong and are gonna impact the meta, but probably not as significant as the previous three, and we got 8 cards in this category. We got the one for Royal Paladin, the one for Oracle Think Tank, Kagero, Tachikaze, Pill Moon, Dark Regulars, Spike Brothers, and the one for Neo Nectar. Each and every one of these cards are gonna be big. The one for Dark Regulars and the one for Neo Nectar can have so many possibilities that it's scary to think about what they can do. And they're probably gonna put those clans 
up on a pedestal and make them have some significant tops. And the one for Royal Paladin and the one for Oracle Think Tank will make their clans even more deadlier. Basically, all these clans have either now a first stride that's very powerful, the, like the one for Kagero and the one for Royal Paladin, it makes their first stride turn much more deadlier. And in other cases, they got strides that are basically stronger late game or second strides, like the one for Oracle Think Tank, as I think it's even deadlier to go into the first Ichikishima first and then into this new one as a second stride as you get more value out of both of their abilities. And then you got something like the one for Spike Brothers that probably make Hellheart 8 even more consistent or more more accessible as you can just go into a stride that says, oh, well, yeah, uh, you... you you blocked me for now, but let's try this thing and I get draw seven or something like that. Like Spike Brothers didn't even need more draws. That's pretty insane. And then we just got an extra attack out of Pill Moon that makes it even more deadly. A stride that costs nothing and gets an extra Vanguard attack as well as an extra Vanguard attack is just very powerful. And then the one for Tachikaze that is a better Dogma and it works with all the new support as well as the old support. It's such a good card in itself and it's probably going to make Tachikaze a lot more consistent and a lot more deadlier. Now for the in-betweeners, these are basically cards that are going to be strong, but they're probably very limited in their playability and they're only for certain builds or they might make new builds in their respective clans. But they are nowhere near the power level of the top threes and in some regards of the winners categories. And we've got 10 cards in this specific category. Those are the ones for Gold Paddlin, Genesis, Nubatama, Murakumo, Gear Chronicle, Dimension Police, Link Joker, Aqua Force, Grand Blue, and Great Nature. Basically what all these cards have in common is that they can do something new for their clans, but we don't really know if it's really that strong. We have to wait and see with current builds and strategies how this will interact. A good example is the one for Great Nature. It has two very interesting skills, and personally I think the most value is in its second skill, but we have to wait and see how much that will impact that they have extra multi-tacking. Another good example is the one for Gear Chronicle. The fact that we can now finally make a timely build that doesn't really rely on Chrono Jet makes the way for so many possibilities, but it's probably nowhere near the power level of Nova Grappler, but it makes Gear Chronicle a lot more interesting in premium, and it has a lot more potential now. So we have to wait and see how strong these new timely decks work are going to be resulting from this card. This argument can be given to any of these cards, like the one for Nubatama. This new stride is very powerful, but at the same time, it can be played around pretty easy for your opponent as they can control what kind of G-Zone cards they're going to call. So if they're only gonna use G-Zone cards that will only be beaters, then yes, that's a lot less deadlier. But this card is probably more against the Protect matchups as Rinne, striding Rinne against a Protect matchup is no, it has no use as they can just whiff with their Protect marker. Then with this card they have an alternate option. Now for the losers category, these are basically the strides that are very weak and they're probably not going to be run in their respective clans as they do not really function in what they're supposed to do or what the clan needs. It's basically something that will do nothing for the clan itself. And we got three cards in this category and those are the one for Angel Feathers, Narukami and Bermuda Triangle. The one for Angel Feathers, it basically doesn't do anything. Yes, you can heal. Yes, you can heal a lot, but the clan doesn't need more stall. It doesn't need that. It has enough. Angel Feathers need more aggression. They need more powerful strides that can do something. And this new Raphael Mitra doesn't help with that. Yes, it's a, probably a good support for Gize, for Angel Gize, but it, the clan doesn't need more Gize support, it needs more Angel Feather support, and sadly they got the short straw. And Narukami, same problem. The stride itself is very powerful, it has a potential field wipe as well as quad drive with the crit and all those extra stuff, but the problem is the card is too slow. It's a late game stride, and Narukami has a bunch of these late game strides that are very powerful that they already can utilize. But the problem is they probably cannot go into those late game strides as their early game is way too weak. They miss draw power, they miss early game pressure, and the opponent can way can counterplay or play around their mechanics way too easy. They needed something that was a good first stride that fixes or at least addresses these issues and this stride does neither of those. If this card was something like bind directly from hand and it's not really that big to be asking as 
We already got locking from hand, we've got dominating from hand, so why not binding something from hand? That's at least weaker than dominating from hand, as it minus you on hand, and then it attacks you into the face. And it also is with an extra crit in Rinna's case. So if this stride could bind from hand, maybe it was useful, as at least you couldn't play around it, and Narukami had something to bind through something, or that your opponent needed to make some alternate plays ju than just not calling something. And lastly, the one for Bermuda Triangle. I already talked about it when this was the first try that was revealed for Premium Collection, as it only fits a certain niche and doesn't really do that much, as Bermuda Triangle already got very strong other options. And that's why I think it isn't going to be played in lo a lot of Bermuda decks. And that basically finished the entire list. There are probably some cards in this list that you want to put up higher or so, some spots lower. A good example is the one, probably the one for Genesis. I know a lot of people are, are putting it a little bit higher on their own list as it can help with the Wiseman loop and it can put some extra power and a crit on Wiseman. But I'm putting it a little bit lower as I have a friend that plays Wiseman a lot and a pr pretty consistent. And his personal philosophy is that he rather goes into an Himiko grade 3, then use her skill to give Wiseman plus 30k and plus 3 crits, and then multi tech winning, then just outright only 1 plus 10k and then 1 crit. And I know this stride is very good for addressing the issues of Amaruda herself, but I don't think that build is going to be very strong in the meta, and it probably is not going to do a lot. And I, I can be wrong on this part, but that's why I now want to pass the question to you. What's your opinion on all these strides and where are you going to classify the each and, in each and every individual stride? I want to keep in mind, I try to be unbiased at as much as possible as most of the cards of the clans that I play don't really rank that high. Narukami, bottom of the list. Gear Chronicle, almost at the bottom of the list. Yeah, the only one that's really high is the one for Neo Nectar. And the reason why it's that it's all that high is you cannot go around the value of that card. That card is going to be insane and you cannot just unjustify that. But as stated, I'm very curious what you guys think. So let me know in the comments down below what your personal list is and which card you're the most hyped for getting when we're going to open up some of these premium collection boxes. But with that, we'll conclude this video. As always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters over at Patreon. You guys are amazing in helping me making this content for all you guys. If you do want to support me on Patreon, then head on over to patreon.com slash Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timeleap, and I'll see you guys in the next one.